This week on The Wire, first home buyers stronger since 2011, ASIC updates guidelines for loans, and prices rise faster than expected. G'day guys, my name's Tim Guest, and I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth, and welcome to The Wire, the week in real estate where you can get all the top stories happening this week in finance, real estate, investment, and more. Now please like, comment, and share this video. And if it's your first time tuning in, welcome along, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Now, top story for this week is first home buyers, stronger since 2011. So there's never been a better time to get into your first home, and it's showing. So improved housing affordability has led to the highest percentage of first home buyers in the marketplace for eight years, and this is according to research from the Real Estate Institute of Australia. Now, first home buyers now comprise almost 30% of all home loans, which is the highest market share since December 2011. REIA President Adrian Kelly says the September quarter 2019 edition of the REIA Housing Affordability Report finds housing affordability has improved in all states and territories except Tasmania. In the September 2019 quarter, the number of new, first, new loans to first home buyers grew by 13.6%, which was up by 7% on the previous year. Now, the proportion of income required to meet loan repayments decreased in most states and territories, dropping to 22% of income in Western Australia, 26% in South Australia, 32 in Victoria, 36 in New South Wales, and 19 in the Northern Territory. However, Kelly warns that first home buyers need to be alert to some of the hidden risks associated with a mortgage. He recommends that buyers calculate whether they can afford a potential increase on their mortgage payments so they are protected if interest rates rise. Now, providing you've done effective planning, first home buyers home buyers who move quickest are sure to take advantage of some of the most affordable housing that we've had in Australia over the past 20 years. Great, well next up, ASIC updates guidelines for loans. So ASIC is providing clear guidelines to banks to help, them, help their applicants' ability to repay the loan. So banks are being told by ASIC to go beyond a basic spending benchmark, which is known as the Household Expenditure Measure, or HEM, when engaging the reliability of customers' expenses. The HEM does not include spending on expenses such as medical bills, counselling services, life insurance, superannuation, hex debts, lease payments, child support and spousal maintenance. Yet these are relevant to a loan assessment. The source of the consumer's income is also relevant, so including things like social security payments, income derived from assets and third parties such as child support. Now, information about the consumer's expenses helps determine how much of their income is available for the loan repayments. Now, ASIC Commissioner Sean Hughes says the provision of credit is a decision for a lender and not a decision for ASIC. These guidelines have been made to assist lenders make good lending decisions. We're not adding new or additional requirements that do not already exist. All right, now for our final story for the week. Uh, prices rise faster than expected. So median house prices in major markets across Australia have risen as much as 5% in the two quarters since March, and that's figures from Domain. The recovery is in both biggest cities with a faster since regulars began and faster than economists had predicted. Now, Domain economist Trent Wiltshire says the rebound has been much faster than expected and it looks like we may see double digit growth in 2020. AMP Capital Chief Economist Shane Oliver agrees the bounce back is stronger than expected. So if you look at the annualised gains in Sydney and Melbourne, it's about 20%. That's very strong. St George Chief Economist Bessa Dita if, uh, expects prices to continue to increase over the year ahead, given that stock levels are quite low and there is an appetite uh, uh, with the, the low interest rates as well. NAB Chief Economist Alan Oster sees worried buyers across Australia may revert to boom time behaviour. I hope not, he says, but prices have come back a lot. Well guys, that's pretty much it from me. Now, don't forget, like, comment and share this video. And if you don't follow along or you're not a subscriber, make sure you follow and subscribe so you don't miss out on our future videos. Also, stay tuned for our next Just Ask Tim video series. We'll be coming at you next week. And if there's a question you'd like to uh, submit or a topic you'd like me to discuss in more detail, then you can do that in the, uh, in the it's in the post. There's a link in the post. But apart from that, guys, that's it from me. Uh, please have a great weekend. Hope everything's preparing well for Christmas. And remember, it's only one thing in life that makes a difference, guys. That's action. All right, get to it. Have a great day. Speak to you soon.